This is BCFM 93.2. On the trail and the tale of Nazi Party's brute of a treasurer, Martin Bormann. Now, uh, this week, the Bristol Connection, the Jewish refugee and local journalist who tracked Bormann down in the 1970s and paid for his trouble. And also a photograph of Martin Bormann, which I'll put up on the show page later at thisweek.org.uk. If you'd like to have a look at that taken in the Argentinian capital, Buenos Aires, in the late 1970s. So, his name is Stuart Stephen, uh, and he's a Jewish reporter. Uh, back in the days where you could get promotion through doing good journalism, as we were hearing about Julian Assange. I mean, really, Julian Assange perhaps should be, by now, Martin, the editor of the Times newspaper or the Daily Telegraph. Well, he's not, he's not in that position at the moment, is he? But anyway, Stuart Stephen, um, so he was uh, born in Hamburg to Jewish parents in 1941. Stephen fled to England with his parents as a refugee. In 1959-60, he got a job at the Western Daily Press here in the city centre before the uh, Temple Way place was built. And in 1964, he moved on to a national newspaper. That's a pretty quick uh, career progression up to the Daily Express, Beaver Brooks paper. In 1972, he was working very closely with Hungarian journalist Ladislas Frago, tracking Adolf Eichmann and Josef Mengele, etc., in in uh, the South America. Now, Martin, this period of the early 1970s, where there was also a World in Action program all about Mengele, it, there was a lot of interest, wasn't there, in getting some of these escaped war criminals to, to justice? Well, if you remember the uh, Frederick Forsyth book and film, The Odessa File, um, that kind of uh, dramatised this sort of thing. But, of course, what ultimately happened, as you know, that after Eichmann was taken from Argentina, the Jewish community in Argentina went back to the Israelis and said, don't do that again because we're doing quite good business with these ex-Nazis and uh, we don't want you rocking the boat So you're us. saying the Israeli state was responsible for closing down the investigation into... Well, the, when, when, Nazi when, when, when Eichmann was, was extra, extra, extracted from Argentina... The, the Borman organization based in Latin America, uh, basically Borman was, was, was a gangster. He has got nothing against Jewish people as such. He's quite prepared to work. And, of course, the right wing in Israel, the, the Abatinskyites, modeled their movement on Mussolini. And they even spoke to the, the, the Italians and the Germans about, what, what, do you want us to fight the British for you? Will you give us, if we fight the British for you, will you give us Palestine? And um, so all of that stuff, you know, the right wing in Israel are basically crypto-fascist. There's no doubt about it in my mind. So in 1972, working closely with Hungarian journalist Ladislas Farago, uh, um, that was on Saturday the 25th of November 1972, the Daily Express had an exclusive front page, Martin Bormann Alive, and an article inside saying, you are Bormann, with a picture of uh, the Bormann that they had found over there. Uh, the Vatican, apparently, and President Juan Perón were said to have been complicit in his escape and protected him. It wasn't just the Vatican and Juan Perón. It was obviously MI6 as well, because of the, op, of the book Op, op JB um, by uh, Ainsworth Davis, who was the actual... Uh, well, he said the actual author on the book is Christopher Crichton, but he had to use that. Yeah, he, he felt he had to use it because of, yeah. so he didn't get sued under the Official Secrets Act. His real yeah. name was John, yeah, but I mean, John but Ainsworth in, in, Davis. The, 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 at the end of the World War II, the Nazi intelligence structure was basically absorbed lock, stock and barrel into NATO as NATO was being formed. So Reinhard Galen, who used to head the Gestapo, ends up heading the BND, the West German Intelligence Services. Uh, Klaus Barbie, the butcher of Lyon, ends up working for the Bolivian army, training them in torture techniques as an employee of the CIA, who, uh, who at the same time ended up killing uh, Che Guevara. I think Brazil also had its fair share of Nazi war crimes. Well, indeed, that's right. So they, they, they were generally moving over there, and of course, and that's by the way, I don't know if you've seen this, but that's where Ghislaine Maxwell is supposed to now be. Yeah. She's managed to get over there. We have heard nothing very much about no. this international child sex trafficker, London debutante, but no child sex trafficker who knows everything about everything to do with all these children who've been trafficked over the years. No arrest, hardly any news story, but apparently she's hiding in Brazil. Well, that's what she'll be hiding with, yeah, Bolsonaro, won't she? Incidentally, Bolsonaro and um. Various other people are all going to Saudi Arabia for a great big shindig uh, this week, like a sort of Davos in the desert. 
and uh, all of these, the Pompeo, anyway, all these people are all going to it. Before we get off the subject uh, of uh, Bristol's very own Stuart Stephen, um, he was the author and the of uh, the, uh, the journalist behind these, uh, the Daily Express headline, a Daily Express exclusive, Martin Borman is alive. Um, uh, that was on the Saturday, the 25th of November in 1972. On Monday, the 27th of November, just two days afterwards, here he is speaking to a journalist, um, and this was up on the archives of the Associated Press. The difference between this story and every other Martin Borman story since the war is that we have got total documentary evidence for every word that we say. Uh, we have managed to infiltrate the secret services of several Latin American countries. We got those documents out of Latin America. We have them in our possession. Every word which we write, we will be able to produce a bit of paper to say that this is not what we are saying, this is not our version of events. This is the version of events as recorded by people whose professional concern it has been since the end of the war to track and record the movements of Martin Borman. Documents which relate to, what do they relate to, just a name? that he's living under at the moment, or what? They relate to several names which he's living under at the moment. They relate to a situation whereby he went to a Pacific country in Latin America after the war. They relate to the negotiations leading up to that um, invitation to go to that country. And they relate to the basic fact that intelligence services have been monitoring his movements ever since. There is virtually nothing which this man has done which is not known. Now, there is no mystery about Martin Borman. There's no mystery as far as the Latin American countries are concerned about Martin Borman. They knew. There was only mystery as far as the rest of us was concerned. Now, once one had managed to open those safes, get those documents out, get them out of the country, then there's no mystery for the rest of us. And, and this is what we have managed to achieve. So that's the Bristol based originally journalist uh, Stuart Stephen there speaking uh, on the 27th of November 1972. Martin, just to put this in context, Eichmann had been taken out from South America in 1961. There was still, although the official line was, OK, Eichmann is going to be the last, there was still quite a lot of people, particularly Jewish people, who wanted to get some more of these Nazi war criminals, particularly ones who were above Eichmann's head. Yes, but I mean, if you read um, Paul Manning's book, Martin Borman, Nazi in Exile, it became clear that the Borman organisation uh, was very keen to put Jewish business people into, the, into their structures because it was a way of kind of covering their own tracks. Kind of camouflage. Yeah. Basically, and of course, uh, they were, it was very profitable for those who cooperated. Anyway, the things moved very quickly after that. Friday, first of December, nineteen seventy-two, the Daily Express announced that they had been hoaxed. Quite how they figured that out, uh, who knows? Uh, nineteen seventy-four, though, a couple of years later, Ladislas Farago, he'd been working with the Hungarian, uh, published a book called Aftermath: Martin Bormann and the Fourth Reich. And of course, these pictures uh, of Bormann were posted, and I'll put a, a photo up on our show page at thisweek.org. UK last night, both of Borman and of the picture taken 30 years after the end of the war. See if you can I mean, certainly to me it's the most uh, incredible likeness that I've ever seen I mean there's various doppelgangers around Anyway, uh, Stuart Stephen then went on between 1982 and 1992 to become the editor of the Mail on Sunday. In 1998, on the publication of the, of the Borman DNA report, which supposedly showed that, that the uh, skull found in Berlin was Borman, and there was an attempt to sort of put this to bed for once and for all. Uh, I mean, just one thing, Martin. It's, it's almost impossible to do a DNA test to that sort of age, surely. Well, I don't really know. I'm not an expert, but I think you can get DNA from teeth, even from quite, uh, you know, from skeletons from thousands of years ago. So but also, these DNA reports aren't necessarily worth the paper they're written on. It depends who you're paying to do them. Well, the, the, there is definitely, I mean, Paul Manning, who wrote the book I just mentioned, was the senior US correspondent in Britain during the war. 
you know, the, 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 the top guy. And he was absolutely... The, the idea that he died in Berlin is pretty much... Out yeah. Of well, I mean, we've got, we've got evidence from other people saying, well, he didn't die in Berlin because we extracted him. And that's it all in the book Op JB, as you know. And, and of the course, interesting and thing is, ever since that book was published, Op JB, there's been a propensity of all these books talking about Hitler surviving the war and going to... Well, that's what they're doing there, is they're just creating, they're creating a smokescreen. Ultimately, what's underlying all of this is that senior Nazis did a deal with the Western powers at the end of World War II, and they were protected, and they were used in the setting up of NATO as an anti-communist organisation, and the Gladio structures, which eventually ended up carrying out terrorist attacks across Western Europe. That was all staffed by ex-fascist intelligence personnel. And uh, that is the history of NATO. Uh, And... um, I don't see how anybody can dispute it, because as I say, the former head of the Gestapo ends up heading the BND, the West German Intelligence anyway, Services. You fasc- can imagine what the KGB made of that. It's fascinating to see that it was a, uh, a son of a Jewish emigre, emigres, uh, well, he actually did come across as a refugee in 1941, uh, that a- actually got the ball rolling on this story. Uh, quite fascinating that he was from Bristol too, and Stuart Stephen died in January 2004. Now, there were also various stings on him towards the end of his career, Martin, some very serious ones where, for example, he published a, uh, a, a, an article which was said to be, uh, he believed, had been sent to him as if it was from Brian Gould, and it turned out it was from Michael, by, by um, Michael Howard's son, a Tory, instead. But, you know, why would they, someone take the trouble to, to hoax him like that? Uh, if it wasn't an attempt to discredit him as an individual. It's a bit what we were hearing from Stephen Sizer earlier. The information can't be discredited, but you can try and shoot the messenger. Yeah, well, I, I can, you can imagine if he's, if he's been poking around in, st- in things that the deep state doesn't want you to know about, then they've got, a, you know, they've got all, uh, all sorts of different ways of making your life a misery. Like what? Well, like, for example, ruining your career by, by giving you fake information which you think is real, you publish it, and then you're discredited, which is what, of course, you've got to be careful about that, but it's very, you know, they, they could do things like threaten your children. They could kill you, like M- Michael Hastings looks as if he was assassinated by the CIA by hacking his car. They say, well, they don't do things like that. I say, well, hang on a minute, what about John F. Kennedy? What about Robert Kennedy? What about Martin Luther King? All pretty pretty clearly, uh, they've, they've had a court case in, in the US, where a civil court has definitely concluded that the state murdered Martin Luther King, and it wasn't carried out by James Earl Ray, who's still in prison, and the family have, have, have talked to him and said, we don't think he's the killer. So, well, I mean, we're chatting about Martin Borman today, but the thing that's really, I suppose, the reason for that is that it does look as if there were some people in right at the, the very apex of the British state, including uh, Desmond Morton, Winston Churchill, who uh, possibly even earlier back into the war we certainly know from august 1944 were collaborating with these top nazis and offering them protection after the war well, that's I mean, right. people who were the senior war well, but it's also it's also well known that the japanese kempotai uh, the, their version of, of the Gestapo, they were let off largely because they'd been carrying out all these kind of tests with chemical, of chemical and biological warfare on Allied prisoners, you know, filming them as they died when they'd injected them with this stuff. And they said, do you want all the information we've got on this? I said, yes. And they said, we, we'll give it to you, but you've got to let us go. And, of course, they were given a pat on the head and the Western powers just took all over all the information I mean, there's also got the from fact, there's t- also torturing their own prisoners to death. I mean, there's also the fact that we could be looking at some kind of uh, totalitarian state in the future. And so it makes sense to examine... I mean, in a way, the Nazis were a blueprint for any kind of yeah. t- totalitarian state. Yeah, that's right. And, of course, what, what, th- th- this is why uh, we, the Gladio uh, structures, you know, the bombings of Bologna Railway Station and all the rest of it, this is fascist psychological warfare technique, but modernised and and spruced up so that it, uh, it, it looks more liberal, but in actual fact, underlying all of this is a virulent anti-communist uh, I mean, I would, ideology. I would draw a parallel, in a way, between the way Stuart Stephen was treated, although he, you know, he, he, he then went on to become a national newspaper editor, but there was definitely some serious bullying of him during his career for what he found out. Well, that's that's the, 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 compared the, to Julian Assange. Well, well, I mean, the, the, getting worse, basically, right? if you wander if you wander off the park uh, uh, that the deep state uh, accepts as legitimate kind of criticism, then you are going to you're going to run up against this kind of stuff, and that's because they are as they are. They are basically criminal networks. 
Time to sign off for the USO and Comcast News at 8 now. Thanks to our guests in the first hour, Green Party's Bristol Mayor candidate in next May's election, Sandy Hall Rutherford, and Gloucester's prospective parliamentary candidate for the Brexit Party, Richard Ford. Also, you heard just there, Irish Republican Labour activist Martin Summers. Download our MP3s and you can listen in the car or anywhere you like. Find this show's podcast, story links, and con- comment page and our contact details at this week, one word, dot org. Dot UK. I'm on Twitter at Tony Gosling. Here's wishing you a relaxing and enjoyable BCFM weekend. Our sister show Dialects here next Tuesday at noon. Do please join us for the politics show at six o'clock next week. God bless and don't let the banksters get you down. I'll leave you with Harry and Chris. I've just discovered rather enjoy their stuff. Thank you so much for having us. It's nice to be back. Uh, we're often told to be afraid of a lot of different things. And we found it a bit overwhelming. So we thought what the world really needs right now is a nice, fun song about fear. (laughs) Some people are scared of spiders. Some people are scared of heights. Some people are scared of posting photos online that don't get no likes.